We've graphed parabolas from vertex form before, but now we're going to learn how to graph them from standard form. Standard form means we have a parabola that's given to us in that form right there. Notice E A is a coefficient of x squared, B is a coefficient of x, and C is the constant term. To find the vertex, we're going to use this little mini formula right here. This will get us the x coordinate of our vertex. So I'm going to write negative, and then B in this case is this negative 8. So negative of a negative 8 all over twice the value of A, and A is this number right here. This, of course, will give us a positive 8 on the top because of the negative of a negative, and on the bottom we'll get negative 4, and all that simplifies to a negative 2. If that number comes out particularly ugly, you might want to use a calculator to help you with arithmetic. So we now know the x-coordinate of our vertex. Now it's time to find the y. This little notation is function notation. It's asking us to take what we got right here and plug it in into the function. So we're going to write y equals negative 2. And then our x had been this negative 2 here, so don't be confused. This negative 2 and the fact that we're putting in a negative 2 also for the x is a coincidence. It's, they don't normally match. And here's the rest of the equation. Now simplifying this, I get, remember you square first, so that's a positive 4 right here, times a negative 2, so it's a negative 8. Negative times negative. And then we end up with negative 8 plus 16, which is a positive 8. Positive 8 plus 10 is 18. So the thing that is no longer a mystery is what the vertex is. Our negative b over 2a gave us a negative 2. And then our y coordinate ended up being an 18. Now let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be the value of y when x is 0, because x is always 0 when we're on the y-axis. So if I didn't know of any other way, I would probably just write 0 in place of every x. But as you probably can see, plugging in a 0 into this term or this term, no matter what the coefficients might have been, would have always just left us this last number since the zeros compute to a bunch of small little zeros. So 0 plus 0 plus 10 is just a 10. And it's trying to tell us that where it crosses the y-axis is at a height of 10. The symmetric point might not be a value that you're used to hearing about. It basically is the reflection of the y-intercept onto the other branch of the parabola. I noticed that uh, I didn't mention that it was the reflection of the y-intercept, but that's actually what it is. So think of it this way. Parabolas have perfect symmetry. I've now placed this vertical line going right through the vertex. And what I mean by an axis of symmetry is that if I were to fold the parabola right on that line, the one half of the parabola would basically fold over onto itself, onto the other half. Do you see how the point that I've labeled being 10 units high on the y-axis would land right where that blue dot is on the other branch if we had used wet paint and then enfolded it over. When I talk about the symmetric point, I'm talking about this point right here. And it's notice that it's how high is it compared to the y-intercept? Notice it's going to share the very same height as the intercept. As far as the x-coordinate goes, if my If I walk two units sideways to get to the vertex because of the negative 2 coordinate, 
And then if I have this symmetry going on, this perfect mirror image, I would walk two more units this way in order to get to the x coordinate of this point right here. So basically, two units here and then two more units here means that that is going to have an x coordinate of 4. Excuse me, negative 4. So basically, that means we're always going to have an x coordinate that's exactly double the x coordinate of the vertex. Just so that you don't get confused with my axes, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this point right here so it won't confuse you. So basically, we moved negative two units to get directly underneath the vertex, and then we moved another two units to get over to the other branch, and that's why that has a negative four. So I think the best way to come up with a symmetric point is to draw the picture and reason it out, but it will always end up being two times the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now, since we use this negative b over 2a to refer to the x-coordinate of the vertex, you could also write it like that, comma, and then it is always the height of the y-intercept. So since we said that the y-intercept was just the same as the c value, I'm going to write this as c. So keep in mind up here, Again, because of plugging in the zeros here just left us with a 10. The other way to find the y-intercept, it's always the c value. Okay. Now it's time to find the x-intercepts. And, of course, not every parabola is going to have them because if we have a parabola that looks like this, and it has its vertex up above the x-axis, and then it's bending upward, you can see that it's not heading towards the x-axis. It wouldn't have any. But you can clearly see that there's going to be a couple of x-intercepts right here. So, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and find out where those are. Now, keep in mind, this is where the y is 0. So, basically... I go put in a 0 for y into the equation. So 0 is equal to negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 10. To solve this, uh, I'm going to be using the quadratic formula. Most of the time, this will not be factorable. And in this case, I believe it might be factorable, but... Uh, most of the time you'll be using the quadratic formula because it normally isn't factorable. But if it is factorable and you know how to do it, you can certainly solve the quadratic equation that way like we often have. Using the quadratic formula, negative b, b is a negative 8. I should probably remind you what that formula is. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that'll give us our x values. That should be a, something that looks familiar. So the negative b is negative of a negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, you know, whether b is positive or negative, when you square it, it'll never matter. It'll always come out positive once we square it. So there's our b squared minus 4 times a. a is going to be the negative 2 again. c, which is 10, all over twice a. So when cleaning this up, it ends up being 8 plus or minus the square root of that's going to be a 64 plus. Why will it be plus? Because this will be a negative product right here. And then minus a negative will be back to positive again. So that's going to become an 80 
4 times 10 is 40, times 2 is 80, all over a negative 4. And that's equal to 8 plus or minus. Now, 80 and 64 is 144. And of course, since 144 is a perfect square, we should continue. So this right here, we will get 8 plus or minus 12 over negative 4. Now we play the cover-up game. So 8 plus 12 is 20. 20 over a negative 4 is a negative 5. So that's one value. 8 minus 12 is a negative 4. Negative 4 over negative 4 is going to be positive 1. So, so one of them is a negative 5 and the other one is a 1. As you can see, there's our 1 and there's our negative 5. If this number right here had not been a perfect square, if it had been something like 8 plus or minus a square root of 13, we could have left it as a root 13. We would not have to try to go further. You can convert these to decimals when they don't come out evenly, but unless you've been asked for that kind of value, it's fine to leave them in their exact form. Also, too, sometimes the one where the 144 is comes out to be a negative number. And when that's the case, it's just confirmation that there are no x-intercepts. I should mention one other thing, too, because I know where we're heading. These are called x-intercepts. I call them x-i-n-t-s for short. But they're also called roots and the material that will be coming up uh, not too far down the road may use that wording roots I just want you to know roots and x-intercepts are the same thing so what we have here is everything you need to know about uh, graphing a parabola from the uh, standard form and basically, we use the negative b over 2a, comma, the function when you plug in the negative b over 2a to get the vertex. The y-intercept is always going to be the c value. The symmetric point is always the reflection of the y-intercept over the axis of symmetry onto the other branch. So it's like the folding over the parabola onto the other branch. And then the x-intercepts answer the question, what is x when y is 0? And there you can get a chance to solve a quadratic equation by your factoring method or by your quadratic formula method. So that should do it. Uh, then one last bit of fun. Here's a problem for you to try on your own. I'd like you to do it out by hand. You may use your calculator for arithmetic, but bring it to class tomorrow.